Previously on the Jay and Dan podcast. I just finished crying in the car. What? Here Chris? it is again. Oh. Here come the waterworks from Toolsy. <laughs> It's going to be tears in the studio. Mm -hmm. Brian Williams is very street. Mm -hmm. We sound like two wild and crazy guys, huh? (laughs) Cherapovitz, you're going to go to the Cherapovitz game, huh? Mm -hmm. And you're going to finally hear producer Tim's voice. Here we go. I do watch The Big Bang Theory. It reminds me of On Right. Uh, Favorite character is Penny, I think. (laughs) Wait, can we go back to the beginning of that? (laughs) There was a moan or something. Listening to the Jay and Dan podcast, brought to you by Mark's Never Iron Perfectly Pressed Shirts. Dance. Dance. Hey, you showed up for work. Uh, nice work. Hey, I was on time for this podcast. All right, I'm supposed to be off all week. And uh, I came into work. I even wore a T-shirt with your face on it. I, I'm starting to think uh, you don't have a lot of clothing because I, every time I see you not in a suit, you've got that shirt on. I do wear it around town a lot. It's just an interesting social experiment. <laughs> like you wear a T-shirt uh, with the face of your uh, broadcast partner on it. Well, we've had this is our sixth episode. You've worn it on two. I guess that's true. I have, haven't I? I got to get some different uh, faces on the <laughs> shirts. Maybe Gino. Uh, maybe Paul Romanuk because Paul Romanuk is our guest oh, on the Jay and Dan podcast, uh, the perfectly pressed podcast brought to you by Mark's perfectly pressed shirts. Uh, no time to uh, iron, throw that baby in the uh, in in the dryer for I don't know five seconds and it's going to be beautiful. You know what I was thinking? Who would love that shirt, Kramer? Because he used to put his shirts in the oven, the the pizza oven. Right, the order's ready. Three calzones. And one hot shirt and jacket. Oh, this is all burned up. Look at this. What the hell do I know about cooking a shirt, huh? It's everything people guys on it. That's right. Yeah. You throw the Mark's Perfectly Pressed shirt in the pizza oven, and you've got a great-looking shirt for a night on the town. Not as nice as a Dan O'Toole shirt. You ready? Yeah. Here we go. There we Ooh. go. Uh, I hope these aren't monster energy drinks, or we'll Shh. die. Oh, that's tasty stuff. Uh, So you were off all week. Where the heck were you? Well, um, I'm still off. um, And I I went to Chicago this week, Dan. I went to see the Monday night football game at Soldier Field. First off, I love that city. Chicago is an amazing city. It's so funny how people in Toronto, where we live, a lot of them say, well, Chicago is what we should aspire to be. That's the city we should aspire to be like. It's got beautiful architecture and restaurants and everything. And they make use of the water. And they make use of the waterfront. Uh, and like Toronto, we, we just ignore it. We're the only city in the world that's on a giant lake and we pretend it's not there. Uh, <laughs> you live by the lake? Oh, brutal, dude. That's Nobody lives there. It's a lake. Every, in Everywhere else in the world, it's like, oh, can I, I hope I can get a house on the lake or a condo on the lake. Here it's, as soon as you know someone lives on the lake in Toronto, you know they've just moved to Toronto and they're probably going to be moving out of there soon. Because it's frigid in the winter and there's nothing down there. There's nothing going on down there, and there's a, if you don't live in Toronto or haven't been there, there's a, a, an expressway through the downtown called the Gardner Expressway, and it is elevated, and it's sort of a mental barrier. People just don't want to walk. Who would want to walk under an exp- express, you know, expressway? Nobody, I was going to say expressway, like espresso. Uh, uh, It'd be like French that. Connection, you know, going under the... Uh, anyway, yeah, Chicago was great, and uh, the Soldier Field, just beautiful. I don't, uh, you know, what they did... Years ago, as they renovated it, so they kept the bottom half and then essentially laid an upper bowl. You know, it on looks top like a spaceship it. landed on it, right? But it really works. Like it looks spectacular in person. I don't know if it, it TV does it justice, but it was great. And the thing about the crowds at an NFL game, and I, you know, again, I'm generalizing a bit, but man, they know football. Like they know everything about what's going on with their team. Um, you know, the situations that their team is in, they know when to stand, they know when to cheer. The crowd is great. I will say one thing, though. They all get <laughs> obliterated. <laughs> I mean, I've never seen a bigger well, group. the same. I, I, I've only been to a few NFL games, but I think that, yeah, that's the case at most stadiums. Not No, but that's Like the Buffalo, thing. definitely. It's true. Buffalo, everyone gets absolutely obliterated. But what I always wonder about is... 
how's everyone getting home? Everyone, we got a ride, guys? Got a couple of DDs? Like, it is crazy how drunk everyone gets. Not just drunk, just crazy drunk. And I was, um, I went to, I met lots of nice Canadians, came up to me and said hi. And, and I went to the, to the washroom at halftime. And, you know, massive lines uh, to, to use the washroom urinals. You, you see the worst of humanity in the, the washrooms at NFL stadiums. Well, this is just the thing. So we're in the, you know, there's seven lineups for the seven urinals. And they're, you know, five guys deep. And so there's Lions fans and there's Bears fans in these lineups. And they're, play, you know, playfully chirping at each other. The Bears had a lead at halftime. And so the Bears fans are giving it to the Lions fans. And the Lions fans are giving it to the Bears fans. And then at one point, some Bears fan said something about the Lions can suck his <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> and dude got real real fast and all of a sudden two dudes were toe to toe and you know that moment whether it's at a bar or you're at a party or whatever and you see that one dude wants to fight another dude but the dude who doesn't want to fight realizes it and is trying to figure out a way to get out of it and still not look like a complete coward in the process are you <laughs> urinating at this point i'm in line and this is the amazing okay. thing so i'm in line and there's a guy in front of me and he sees it happening too and he's like dude what's going on you've got a better view than i do i'm like i don't want to get involved in this crap i just want to kind of witness it so you know every man for himself here we're all watching but we're pretending we're not watching because we don't want so this guy from detroit heard this guy from chicago say this and you could just he looked like Eminem circa eight mile era. He had like a a white tank top, wife beater shirt on. He had the tats and he was gesturing to the tats like they meant something. He was clearly an ex convict and, and he was like this were means they, were they tribal? This means I murdered someone. <laughs> This tribal tattoo on my ankle, this dolphin on my ankle means I murdered seven inmates. This barbed wire tattoo around my bicep. This this set of, of dice on my balls means I murdered 17 inmates in Oz. So he was serious. And the other guy was like, oh, no, dude, you know, we're just, I'm just playing. You know, and just in a way you're like, oh, man, you are so screwed. And next thing you know... Those two dudes were toe to toe. Really? So it went down. It got real. No, it didn't go down. Nothing happened. Ah. Yeah, the the cowardly guy just just walked away. And then and then we're all kind of sitting there like, well, I guess we got to take a leak now. Get if, out of here. If you saw a poop in uh, in the urinal at a NFL stadium, it would not be shocking. Wow, that was a real. Bold subject change about the urinal. No, I'm just so just a big log of <laughs> in the urinal. You go up to take your poop. Now here's the question: You're in a lineup with several other fans, <laughs> so presumably they've all seen the. <laughs> it's like, you know, when you go into uh, to a bathroom and and maybe the you know as a guy all the urinals are taken and then you go into a stall or something, and the the bathroom the toilet's like a mess. There's oh. like logs and logs of poo and there's toilet paper everywhere it's like chernobyl it's like a disaster and all you can think of is hey the dude who comes in next after me he's gonna think i did this i know when uh when i have to take my uh, daughter to the washroom i have to go in and inspect the facilities and she can't have anything on the bowl before she does her business and you go into some some of these washrooms and you're what is wrong? What are you eating? Oh, so you can't lay like little pieces of toilet no, paper. No, if down. she sees something like on the walls of the bowl, she's she. Let's go Do to another one. You guys just leave food on the walls of your toilet? <laughs> no, bowl, I mean, or? I mean at a a public. Oh, washroom. okay, all right. I thought maybe you just left sandwiches on your <laughs> upper tank. Um, there was. I forgot to mention this when we were in Cuba. I did lift the toilet seat of uh, a toilet in Cuba, and they uh, there was a frog under it. <laughs> oh, that's that's kind of cute, actually. Uh, speaking of frogs, um, mentioned uh, that it was my uh, daughter's birthday and we got her a frog and a fish. The frog's dead. It lasted two weeks. The frog is dead. Did Sydney eat the frog? Is nope. that how he died? Uh, rigor mortis set in. and <laughs> What? <laughs> we had to tell her on the way home from school that Kermit was dead. It's not that easy being green. Having to spend each day the color of the leaves. Wow. Yeah. So uh, how did you tell her? Like like how how did you I wasn't there. Oh, so your your wife had to do the dirty yes. work there.
Uh, I, I got the phone call. I said, hey, don't worry. Uh, Frog, uh, he's with the Papa now. He's in heaven. They're hanging out. Hey, just hopping around. She goes, but he doesn't know how to feed frogs. I'm like, well, that frog wasn't very hungry and never ate. <laughs> did the frog starve itself? It did. <laughs> It was useless. That's terrible. It was useless. Well, maybe you weren't providing it the proper care it needed. No, so Chicago was um, awesome. Really fun city. Had a great time. And um, now I'm back. I, uh, I got to hang out with uh, producer Tim, and it was Ladies Week on, uh, on Sports Center. We had yep. uh, Kate in for a few nights and Natasha the rest of the week. And I wouldn't know it by the thousands of tweets I get that say, don't bother coming back. <laughs> So, um, Tim's going to kill me for saying this, but it has to be said. Uh, <laughs> I showed Tim my, uh, my uh, Halloween costume that I wore the weekend before. I went as a hillbilly. It was pretty gross, I got to say. I, I put on a uh, tank top with uh, barbecue sauce and uh, Coca-Cola spilt all over it. I had a mullet. I had teeth. I didn't have to. It wasn't a very far stretch for me. And you had the Halloween party a week before because it was your daughter's birthday. Right. Because otherwise people would be like, why? <laughs> So Do you I, celebrate Christmas on December the first? Maybe, yeah. maybe on Sports Center we'll bring that picture up. We might oh, put it on. We might have to. Um, so we're talking about my costume, and then Kate was mentioning she's going to go as a football player, and Tim just a, a sexy football player. I'm uh, like, oh, Tim. Tim. <laughs> Honestly. And then he's like, and then it got onto something else. Someone said, well, suggested another costume. And they're like, he's like. A sexy basketball player? I'm too sexy for my shirt. It's just, oh, it shirt. just was creeping me out. Like, Tim. <laughs> oh, my God. That guy. The other thing that I noticed uh, is that the banter between you and Natasha has just been, I mean, just stellar. I mean, I feel like I'm, I'm ready to lose my job over some of the sports banter that you guys have been experiencing together. She, uh, we brought her on TSN Radio because we always uh, visit uh, uh, the midnight slot on TSN Radio before we do our Sports Center shift at 1 a.m. Eastern. That's right. And uh, Natasha came on. She was very nervous, but she uh, hit it out of the park. Well, uh, let's uh, take a listen to your discussion with Natasha from uh, last night's show. Oh, okay. Take a look at this newsroom because uh, when you see it, uh, tomorrow. Totally different. It's going to be spark sparkling. Sparkling. You got a big newsroom clean tonight. The, the place is pretty pumped. Morning. Wow, that was compelling. <laughs> I can't wait to watch the next episode. <laughs> Admit it. When we get that email that the newsroom's going to be cleaned, you get a bit excited because it's a dump. I get the biggest b I've ever gotten in my life. I spent, I spent the entire evening chasing flies. Really? Yes. Well, we, we've had fruit flies in the newsroom before. But that newsroom, it, it, it is like a disaster area. It's like after a hurricane hit. <laughs> um, I also discovered that we could, uh, this past week, uh, we could be making some money. I didn't know this. What? We work in Canadian television. Do tell. I went to Walmart to pick up some uh, chicken wings. Uh, Hold on. Back up. <laughs> <laughs> You're not destitute. Listen, what are you you paying for them with food stamps? They're one of our sponsors on NASCAR Canada, and I have to, if I have a second, tell you, get Pinty's Chicken Wings. You can only get them at Walmart in the freezer aisle. They're delicious. Wow, you know you're why? Like, you're salivating just thinking about them. Well, you know why? Most of these chicken wings you buy in the store, you put them in the oven, they're, they're, the sauce is already on them. They're yeah, gooey. It's they're disgusting. It is they gross. come, the sauce is not on them. Oh. So you put them in the oven, they get crispy, then you put as much... Or as little sauce as you want on them. And they've got like seven different kinds. Anyway, chicken wings need to be crispy. Oh, they're delicious. I've already gone through like four boxes. Uh... So so I come out and I'm getting into my car and the guy's like, hey, Dan. I'm like, hey, nice to meet you. And uh, he goes, I love your guys' show. And I said, thanks a lot. He goes, oh, I wish I had a hundred bucks on me and I could be a friend of the show. Because it's a hundred bucks, right? I'm like, what? <laughs> so you think we're... <laughs> he thinks prostitutes? we always mention friends of the show, and what it is, it's athletes that we run into who say they watch the show, and we say, okay, can we make you a friend of the show? So, but this guy, in his mind, we're getting $100 from every person that's a friend of the show, so we could wow. be making some coin. Yeah, we could have, and from NHL players, too, we could have charged them 1000 Well, not now, not during the lockout. So I felt bad. Not I never nothing. even corrected him. I'm like, <laughs> did I wave by? <laughs> 
Well, that's good. I, I, I encountered a lot of nice Canadians at, at Soldier Field. Uh, it's always fun to see groups of Canadians come down. Again, all obliterated beyond belief. Uh, but very friendly as I was drinking Mike Ditka brand wine. Only the best. You tweeted that picture. Yeah, yeah. I thought, I have to get a glass of this. It wasn't bad. It wasn't too bad. You can't get that in Canada. No, probably not. I tweeted a picture of the new Tim Hortons Cups the other day. Um, they've got a football on them to commemorate the 100th Grey Cup. Oh, yeah? It doesn't matter what you take a picture of. So I was holding it so I could see all the cups, so my hand was in a strange position. People, here was one of the tweets. Someone said, um... Ah, uh, just wait, just wait. Oh, here we go. Hang on. Way to go. Hang on. Holy, even your thumbs are short. That's a <laughs> tiny thumb, my man. <laughs> you got uh, stubby thumbs, Toolsy? I, but I don't. I have regular-sized thumbs, but I curled it in so you could see all of the cup. There is a uh, an anchor who works for a different network, and the way we identify her is uh, as man hands. She had man hands. <laughs> Man hands? The hands of a man. It's like a creature out of Greek mythology. <laughs> I love that Seinfeld episode. Oh, it's a good one. <laughs> when, when she says, here, let me get that for you, and opens, opens the bud, and he's like, that wasn't a twist. <laughs> and then she cracks open the lobster. Don't you just love lobster? Oh, it's one of my favorite episodes. No, man hands. We'll just let the, the audience, it'll be a mystery. No one will know who the man hands is. And this week uh, in the newsroom, we uh, we went back in time. It's, it's something that's not done in television anymore. Long, drawn-out intros to shows. Producer Tim pulled, the, pulled up the Simon and Simon intro. Oh. Now, I'd say 95% of the people listening to this podcast have no idea what Simon and Simon is. Well, maybe not 95, but maybe... Uh, maybe 70. Um, this is an epic intro. Okay, we should explain the show. Yeah. It was two brothers. They were private detectives. One was sort of uh, put together. The other was sort of, uh, his life was sort of half fallen apart, right? But it, this grabs you from the opening opening guitar. Took place in straight. San Diego. Just the, one of the best intros to any show ever. And this goes on for a full minute. It's a long intro. <laughs> and then this part is where you should clap. What a tune. Because all the shows now, they don't want to lose the audience, so they do like a five-second intro and just hop right into the show. It's true. We're like, here we go. Nobody has... <laughs> And there was way more sax in every song that existed in the 80s, right? It was like, we don't have a sax player? Well, I guess we'll cancel the recording session then. Uh, we'll probably have to do it tomorrow, because there's no way we're doing anything without the sax. This intro still going on. Still going on, because then, and the other thing is, they would list the actors, but they wouldn't just show one quick shot of the actor. It would be the actor, and then ten scenes that the actor had been in the show. Because it was it was more fun. It was like okay, you're sitting back and you're watching an episode of Simon and Simon, right? You're not, you know what? Life was a little more simple back then, Dan. And um, it, so it got us listening to the other themes, uh, the Dallas theme. Oh. I was allowed to stay up and watch the intro to Dallas, then get my butt to bed. What a great show! Oh. It really was a great show. Christoph. Yeah, so this. Yes. Epic. Epic. Here come Hagman's eyebrows. They're gonna get ya. Oh. There's that little. Oh. Do they still use this theme for the new Dallas? Yeah, they do. They do. Oh, listen to <laughs> Great stuff. Yeah, the new Dallas is back. It's on Bravo in Canada, which is owned by Bell Media, so. There you go, CTV. There's your one. We don't have those week. Bravo um, ads on uh, TSN anymore where they put seven different shows <laughs> all into one promo. I, I can't tell what show's which. It's <laughs> like suits, 
and Scruff, Franklin and Bash, their buddies and their lawyers who hate each other, what will happen next? Or something. Nobody knows. And Suits, that's the show, right? They're just happy that the guy from Saved by the Bell got work. By the way, um, we have more uh, more critiques I'm I'm enjoying reading the critiques of our podcast across the country. We're getting a lot of critics. Really? Critics are all over us, Dan. Even though we're number one on iTunes. I think, you know, when you're number one, people are taking shots at you. Uh-oh, someone attacked us again? This one, actually, this is pretty positive, I think, somewhat. Uh, this is from Chris Cameron. Uh, and Chris works for the Pick 2 Nova Scotia News. Love Nova Scotia. Okay, the Scosche. And uh, so he's rating some of his favorite no, podcasts. No one calls it the Scosche. No one. Everybody's always like, oh, the skosh. I called Kamloops the loops the other day. They loved it. So yeah. it's the skosh from now on. But So he likes he likes the PTI podcast. Uh, Adam Proto has a, a, the, a, the hockey news radio show. And then he lists our podcasts. And he says, and here we go. I'm going to do it in my, uh, in my critic voice. Here we go. This one is definitely not for everybody. TSN Sports Center hosts Jay Onright and Dan O'Toole touch on some of the top happenings in the sports world, but at the same time carry their ridiculous humor over from Sports Center to the podcast. If you don't like their humor, you won't like this. They've had an array of guests so far through five episodes, including Jerry D, Ewan Curry of the Sheepdogs, Aaron Ward, Rod Smith, and more. It's really the lighter side of sports while still looking at the pressing issues each week. If you don't like it, don't blame me. These two can be a little out there sometimes. Why? That was pretty. That was okay. Eh? The opening of that review was almost identical to the last review you read. <laughs> I thought it was the same one. <laughs> this one is definitely not for everybody. That's yeah. That could probably be our tagline. Um, and then another thing, someone sent me Dustin Forbes on Twitter sent me this uh, tweet. Again, really appreciate all your feedback on Twitter. We we love to read your tweets. And this one says, doing some catch up on the Jay and Dan podcast. I think Jay on right sounds like. Paul Rudd. Anyone agree? I don't know. Paul, do you do you have any opinion on that one? Mr. Rudd? Don't do anything. Don't try to surf. Don't do it. The less you do, the more you do. Do I sound like that? The Not less you do, the more you do. Not really. I like Paul Rudd. I'm a fan. 60% of the time, it works every time. That sounded more like me. You sound identical still to the Cleveland Tourism ad. <laughs> um, and then another cool thing about being off for this week, Dan, is like normally, you know, we spend all our nights watching sports. It's a great job. But I never get to just watch sports at, at home. Like I'm always w watching sports in the newsroom. I was busy researching, studying. Studying. Uh, wiping my toilet for all the sandwiches I leave on it. But at the same time, it was nice to be home to watch game one of the World Series on Fox with uh, Joe Buck and mm -hmm. Tim McCarver. But uh, at one point, McCarver... Uh, and I knew this would come up. ...was talking about how Barry Manilow had done a concert at AT&T Park a few years previous, and he made these comments about it. How about Zito? And how about four straight games for the Giants starting pitchers to knock in a run? That's a sound he has not heard in this park too often. The sound of Barry, Barry. They used to say it for somebody else around here. When Barry Manilow was playing in a concert. Or Barry Bonds. Oh. <laughs> Barry Manilow. Yeah, no one's ever chanted Barry, Barry for Barry Manilow. Well, Barry Manilow. <laughs> have you ever been to a Barry Manilow show? Maybe they do that. No, I do have it on iTunes, though. I do have Barry Manilow Mandy. But I change it to my daughter's name, Sydney. You came and you gave without take. Sydney, you won't take unless the bowl is clean. Um, I was singing in the shower the other day. Oh, great. No, but... That's what we wanted to hear. You're going to laugh at this. Um, I got Chris to have to pull the karaoke uh, news or notes to this. Um, and I don't know how it came into my head, but I sang it for my entire shower. So picture me naked lathering up. 
Here we go. Well, I'm butt chugging. Butt chugging. Fits perfect. It actually does. That's actually <laughs> I know. <laughs> pretty good. And I don't know the other lyrics. I was like, <laughs> butt chugging. Fancy and free. I got a chicken of a hundred and three. Hey, you know the lyrics. Come on, baby, you can do more than dance. Cause I'm butt chugging. Anyway, I thought you'd enjoy that. I did enjoy that. Just the visual of me naked to <laughs> well, go along that's... with you and your uh, Justin Bateman. Oh, Jason, Jason Bateman. Jason, just, Justine would have been more acceptable. <laughs> It's just still uh, acting. Uh, Jay Cutler, uh, I heard you and Kate oh, had a little... I wanted uh, to ask you about that. Yep. The uh, the crowd, actually, when Cutler got knocked out of the Monday Nighter, yep. he came back on the field. He got like a standing ovation. He did, I thought yeah. they hated him there. No, they like him. Uh, Rick Riley did a, a great piece about him where he went around uh, Chicago and brought a picture of Jay Cutler and had a, a lemon, and people had to suck on the lemon and try to do the Jay Cutler face. But, um, no, they like, it's like one of those things, like, he's the best quarterback they've had in forever. They want to like him, and they know that they're on the cusp of being a Super Bowl contender. They are a Super Bowl contender, so they want him to be good. They want to like him. He's just kind of a douchebag. But, like, even at the end of the game, he was doing that thing where he was, you know, trying to quiet the crowd down. When they had the game one, the game was over. And he's, like, in the, the crowd's cheering him and going nuts. And it's like, you know, and all he was going to do is hand the ball off to Forte. It wasn't like a big, <laughs> it was like a big complicated play. And he's out there and he's waving his arms like he's trying to fly. He's like, everyone just shut up. <laughs> everyone just stop talking. I'm Jake Cutler. I'm the quarterback. Why? <laughs> and it's like, Jay, can you just soak it up a little bit? And, and just, he's so they just do like him. Okay. Guy. No, they, they do definitely like him. Victory formation. Exactly. Um, they do like him. We're going to talk some hockey with Paul Romanek in a second. But, oh, uh, yeah. That's our guest on the podcast. And, oh, don't forget, another uh, episode of Storytime with producer oh, Tim. Oh, I can't wait for that. We'd be uh, remiss not to mention the New York Islanders movie. Mm -hmm. I tell you, this is nothing but good news for that franchise because now Islanders players, they can say, hey, we, we can live in Manhattan. We can live in Brooklyn. We don't have to live on the island. Well, although Brooklyn is essentially on the island. Correct. Geographically. Yeah. And visiting players are going to love it. It's, I, it's I a win-win. Brooklyn's just sexier. I mean, it's, it's it's like one of the cool, you know, it's the coolest borough in the United States. It's where everyone wants to be. The hipsters are there. Uh, Jesse Palmer's there. How long till Prokhorov, is that his name, Prokhorov? Yeah. How long before he buys that team? Because oh, he, he's not going to like a question. team playing in his rink and Boy, not I hope he them. does. But he's he's like a basketball fan. Like, he's not a hockey fan. Like, I know he's Russian, so you just assume he's a hockey fan. But he's not really... But Charles Wong's not going to make any money if you don't own the rink, or at least get. It's a good some... point. But I, but does Prokhorov own the rink? I don't think he does. It's that Bruce Ratner guy. I think owns it. But I know what you're saying. You're right. It would make sense. Someone brought that up though. I mean, um, you know, the Brighton Beach, like like that's an area of the most Russian immigrants in the United States. So, you know, you'd think Russian free, free agents would be attracted to playing in Brooklyn. That's another positive thing about it. It's just better. It's a cool, it's like just the building alone. Like, yeah. you know, Nassau County Coliseum was just decrepit. So It was. It was a dump. Uh, so that alone is great. And it's it's cool. I, I, I'm really glad they, they decided to stay with New York Islanders, though. That was... Yeah, you don't want to change that name. It's just something you just don't want to mess with. You love the tradition. And people are probably going to mention, well, why don't you have Kevin Conley on... Because we mentioned him, we were going to have him as a guest. Uh, he's doing a 30 and 30 on uh, the former New York Islanders owner who bought the team with no money, Spano. But he can't talk about uh, the documentary that he's doing for ESPN until it's completely done. Right. He, it's not a gag order, but they just say, hey, don't do any interviews until it's cut, and then it's about to air. So that's going to happen in a few weeks, and then we'll get his take on uh, Nassau County. He'll Coliseum do like well. a, a media blitz, I'm sure, and we'll get him on then. But the, he did tweet, and I don't know if you saw his tweet that day. That uh, they announced they were moving to Brooklyn, that uh, he was you know upset at uh, Long Island civic officials for uh, basically failing, and because I assume he grew up closer to Nassau County Coliseum than than mm -hmm. Brooklyn, so I guess it's maybe he's not as happy about it as everyone else is. Okay, um, let's get to to Paul Romanuk. Uh, he used to work at TSN. Uh, you know his voice whenever you hear old uh, hockey highlights uh, that we always have in top tens. You can always hear his his voice in the background. 
That was his uh, goal calls. And now, now he lives in Europe. And um, what, two, three weeks ago, we heard his voice on some KHL highlights. So he said, we've got to get Romanuk on to talk about the KHL. So let's dial up Romy. World champions. Hi, Romy. How are you? It's on right. Hey, good. How are you doing? Oh, we're great. We're great. How's the weather in uh, sunny England today? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I assume you're like a lawyer. And you never ask a question you don't know the answer to. It's, uh, <laughs> it's cloudy and rainy as usual. <laughs> I understand. But I understand you're, uh, I understand you're, you're cooking dinner. Are you, are you grilling something? What, you went for, for fresh mushrooms at the market no. today? Well, uh, uh, I will. I am a bit of a foodie, and I will tell you that the uh, the the availability of uh, of fresh produce in my little London neighborhood is fantastic. I got this little Italian grocer guy I go to, and he gets the fresh vegetables in, and he had uh, fresh porcini mushrooms. Uh, from Italy, so I'm just going to grill them up with a little butter, some this little tagliatelle little pasta, and we're off to the races. Romy, that sounds great. I wish I could hop oh. on a plane right now. Hey, well, I, I'll set a place for you. Paul, we, uh, Jay and I both rave about London. We uh, were there for the Olympics, and we were right in central London. We were five minutes from uh, Trafalgar Square. Uh, we can't say enough good things about that city. It, you know what? It's uh, it is a it's a great place. Uh, it's 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 well, I won't say it's a great place to live. It's a it's it's an expensive place to live, and it's a uh, you know it's it's all the things that come with a, a big big sort of world city. But it's an amazing place to live. Uh, if you like theater, which I do, uh, if you like uh, the arts, uh, you know music. Uh, and of course, sports. Uh, you know, it's it's a fantastic city. There's uh, you can anything you want to eat, uh, watch, buy, participate in is is close at hand, and it, it's it's quite an it's been quite a life experience. Paul, t- for for our listeners who don't know, you know, why you ended up in London and and left Canada years ago, just just give us a little bit of an idea because your wife is a very successful executive who's allowed you to cook porcini mushrooms uh, on a daily basis. <laughs> Well, the, the way it happened, the, the quick version is, uh, I came home one day and, uh, the, you know, uh, we had always wanted to sort of have the experience of living in Europe. Uh, and I was, I came home and, and Carrie told me she had this job. Uh, somebody came up behind me and put a hood over my head. Uh, I was bound and, and I woke up uh, and I was in London and uh, that, that's, here I am. <laughs> and all these years later, there you are. And But now, what are the, the key things? I'm sure you get asked this a lot. What are some of the key things you, you miss about living in Canada, Paul? Well, I mean, it's there, it's no great answer, right? It's uh, I miss my friends. I miss my family. Um, I miss... Uh, Canadians, you know, which, and I'm, I'm, I'm completely straight here, guys. It's, uh, uh, you know, the way you come to appreciate Canada the most, I think, is when you come and live somewhere else. And London is a fantastic place, and it's a great place to live, and I'd never trade the experience. But, uh, you know, Canada as a country and Toronto, the city that I lived many years in, is pretty darn good. You know, uh, Canadians are really nice people in general. And we've got a great culture and a great country, and uh, I will look forward to the day when I come home and and return to Canada. It's uh, I, I, but specifically, I guess uh, you know, other than friends and family, I miss the sports because it's a completely different sporting culture here, uh, and I also miss. Um, uh, yeah, I miss hockey. Uh, it, you know, it, it's uh, it's just not even uh, it's it's not on the radar that you use to find the radar uh over here so it i do miss that we miss hockey now too <laughs> yeah, yeah how's that i ha- i actually have more hockey here living in london than you have in toronto and there's a statement i never thought i'd be making and that's why we have you on uh, the jay and dan podcast because uh, you're calling khl games yeah, I mean, one of those funny things just sort of dropped out of the sky. Uh, I got a phone call one day uh, from somebody at ESPN, and they said, uh, yeah, would you be interested in calling some KHL games? And uh, when I confirmed that it was the Continental Hockey League and not the, uh, you know, uh, 
and up to something else league, uh, yeah, I'd love to. Uh, now, the, the upside is that I'm, I'm calling hockey, which is my first love, as you guys probably know. Uh, the downside is it's uh, off tube from a studio in London. So uh, I'm not actually hopping a plane going to Moscow or Magnitogorsk or wherever the case may be. But, hey, it's still great to call it. Uh, now, t- talk about that and explain that a little further, because for for some of our viewers on TSN and CTV back during the Olympics, a lot of those events were called from a studio in Scarborough and not in beautiful London where the actual Olympics were going on. So how much more challenging is that for you uh, as a broadcaster to try to you know convey that atmosphere without actually being there? Well, I think it depends what it is. Uh, I mean, firstly, it, it, it's definitely, I mean, like it or not, it's its definitely the new broadcast model. It's its the old broadcast model in in, uh, in Europe. It's, it's pretty common with the BBC, with Eurosport, with ESPN, some of the networks I work for over here. Uh, most sports, uh, certainly the secondary ones, are done off tube because it just saves so much money, which is, you know, I mean, that's why you do it. Um, but in terms of challenges, uh, when I did weightlifting during the Olympics, no problem, really, uh, because you, you essentially have the same view, whether you're there or whether you're doing it off monitor. But for something like hockey, you know, it's, it's never the first choice. You miss being able to uh, to look down and, and see what's going on on the bench, look behind the play and see a line change or, or you know, somebody giving, uh, giving somebody a whack as they come back up the ice. So it, it's definitely not first choice. But, hey, it, it's it's obviously doable. Uh, and, um, you know, you miss you miss the odd little bit here and there, but I just try to be honest with the viewers and say I didn't, you know, I'm not sure what happened behind the play because I'm not in the building and, and just kind of go from there. But that doesn't happen too often. Paul, the games that you uh, seem to be calling are crystal clear when we get the highlights because we're showing KHL highlights in SportsCenter now because we have nothing else to show except NBA preseason. But... Uh, <laughs> I asked our producer, producer Tim, the other images are grainy, some are blurry, and I say, Tim, why is the video quality so bad? He said, it's on the other side of the world. I said, Tim, that is a very bad uh, point because the Olympics were on the other side of the world, (laughs) and it was crystal clear. (laughs) (laughs) Well, And I don't have an answer. I I don't know whether, uh, you know, I mean... uh, I will say this. I, I've, I've, I've dealt with Russian TV before, and uh, I mean, some of it's pretty good. Uh, it's as good as, you know, anything you get in North America. And some other stuff looks as though, you know, you have to sort of wire it up to your toaster before it comes in clearly <laughs> and have one arm out the window. And maybe that's some of the stuff you're getting. Uh, Paul, you've also been calling uh, the Spengler for a few years in Europe, and the World Hockey Championship, you were talking to our producer, Mike Gentili, about the fact that you know here in Canada we're so obsessed with the World Juniors and we're obsessed with the NHL, and maybe we don't treat the World Hockey Championship with the kind of regard that it should be treated with. Can you sort of talk to that and how big the, the World Hockey Championship is over there? Well, I I mean, I can I can sort of a quick story just to relate it back to when I started doing the World Championship back in the uh, I think it was the Paleozoic era. Um, (laughs) It it was it was a while back. Yeah. Uh, And I you come over and uh, because yeah, back in Canada, it's it's sort of like uh, I mean, some of the players. you know, half in fun, all in earnest, call it the loser cup because uh, it's it's guys who typically come over from teams that didn't make the playoffs or they get knocked out early, as you know. Um, but you get over here and you go to a few of them, and it's a, it's a big, big deal. Uh, people come. It's it's the biggest hockey event in, in Europe, which is the biggest hockey area in the world outside of uh, the country that you're living in. Uh, and people come from all over the Nordics, uh, you know, Germany, Switzerland, uh, the, the uh, Eastern European countries, all and they because it's it's not that expensive to get from Sweden to Germany or Switzerland to Germany or wherever wherever it is in in Western Europe for the most part, and it's a big big deal. It's it's like a hockey festival. Uh, it's it's. You know, I mean, it's not the Super Bowl, but it's pretty darn close uh, from a hockey perspective. And it goes on for two and a half weeks. And, you know, keep in mind, more people watch on a global basis in terms of, you know, know, just overall numbers. More people watch the gold medal game for the World Hockey Championship than watch the Stanley Cup deciding game. Uh, So 
it is a big deal, and it's a lot of fun to cover. And uh, it's, you know, lots of drinking, lots of carrying on, lots of cheering, and, and it's, it's a very European event. <laughs> lots of carrying on. I, I like that ca- term. You know, there's nothing I like more than carrying on. I love oh, that. I- I like a good carry on myself. <laughs> hey, Romy, uh, I don't know um, what you were calling. You were calling something in Europe 12, 13 years ago now. Uh, I was uh, just starting out in broadcasting. I was um, doing a sports show in Fort McMurray, Alberta. I uh, gave you a call. It was a shot in the dark. Left you a message at the hotel you were staying at. I said, this guy's never going to call me back. I got in the next day. You would return the phone call, explain the time difference, and when a better time was to call. And the times never worked out. I never got a chance to call you back. But I have to thank you now for uh, calling a... uh, a guy you'd never heard of before, back and saying you'd do the interview. So thank you very much for that. I don't know if you'd ever remember that, but uh, that happened 12, 13 years ago. Yeah, well, you're very welcome. Uh, it's, uh, I, I'm, you know, I, I like to think that uh, yeah, I, I would do that kind of thing because um, more than 12 or 13 years ago, uh, I was I was that guy, uh, you know, working in radio at uh, at Ryerson, or after that at a radio station I worked in in Oshawa, calling around trying to get interviews. So, um, you know, I've, I, I like to think I'd I'd still I'd still do that kind of thing. Now, 12 or 13 years ago, that that, that puts you like, were you even? Shaving men? <laughs> He's not shaving now. <laughs> but look how far I've come. Uh, 12, 13 years later, I've got a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we're the last ones to have it. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you guys have a podcast. Uh, you're shaving, and I've lost all my hair. So, I mean, well, what happened there? <laughs> it actually, I think it worked out pretty well. Hey, by the way, Romy, another question I wanted to ask you is the, the, uh, the classic call, maybe your most famous call, the It Is Over World Junior call. Do you still get asked about it, uh, not just when you're back home in Canada, but but even over in London? Do you still get recognized? Do people still talk to you about stuff like that? Uh, you know what? It's, it, I'm completely uh, 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 flattered, uh, all kidding aside, that uh, you know the people still remember me because the last time that. I was calling NHL games sort of on a regular basis on TSN. I mean, that was a few years ago. And, uh, you know, it, it's really nice to be asked about it. I, I think, you know, I'm probably remembered more for international hockey than I am for uh, the NHL games. And, yeah, I do get asked about that. And the funniest thing, uh, and it, it, it has happened a few times here, if I'm down in sort of the touristy part of the city at the during the touristy part of the year, uh, you know, I can, about 18 months ago, I was at a pub in Covent Garden, which is a very touristy part of London, as you guys would know from being here. The Maple Leaf? Uh, no, I was, but very close. The Maple Leaf is on Maiden Lane. I was in a place called the, uh, the Nags Head, which is right at the sort of four corners of Covent Garden when you get off the Piccadilly line tube. And, uh, I was sitting in there and this guy went to the bar and sort of did a bit of a double take and he came over and he sat down. And he goes, he goes, you used to call the World Junior Hockey Championship. <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of looked up in shock because uh, obviously, you know, I'm sure you guys get recognized all the time uh, just out and uh, out and around in, in Canada where you're on every day. But uh, it just it doesn't happen to me much over here for obvious reasons. And then when you're on Eurosport or ESPN, uh, you're just a voice. You're never on camera. So, uh, yeah, it's still once in a while. And, and I guess that's I guess that's the call. But it's better to I don't know if it was my greatest call, but it, it's something people remember. And it's better to be remembered for for a call and uh, than for nothing. <laughs> That's great. Um, it is a classic call, and that was actually in um, the intro to us interviewing uh, you for this piece here. So uh, people will uh, get a nice flashback with that. Uh, before we let you go, Romy, um, we always give the KHL a hard time, first off because of the video quality, which is atrocious. Uh, but you hear uh, stories about guys getting paid in cash and stuff. But if you boil it down and look at the level of hockey that you've been calling, if you put a blindfold on, took the uh, the uh, names off the back of the jerseys, is it uh, NHL caliber? Well, the short answer is no. Um, but you know, I mean, the qualifying answer is. You know, could could the top teams in the KHL compete in the NHL and make the playoffs? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, that team in St. Petersburg, 
uh, is, is an outstanding hockey club, no matter how you slice it. Uh, the team in Magnitogorsk, pretty darn good hockey club. Um, so, yeah, those teams could. Could the lower teams? No, of course not. But then to switch it around, uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs, I think, would get the tar kicked out of them on a regular <laughs> basis playing in the KHL by the top team. So, well said, uh, Romy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, the, the NHL is without a doubt the best league in the world, but the KHL is number two and uh, the second best league in the world. And the, the level of play is very high and the level of skill is very high. And I think that, uh, you know, that's something that, that people should should keep in mind. It's it's easy to sort of laugh it off and go, oh, what is this, uh, Magnitogorsk uh, Metallurg and, uh, you know, funny looking logo and I can't read the writing and what's that all about? But, you know, th- these guys are professionals and they're excellent players and many of them could play in the NHL. So it, it deserves some respect. Romy, uh, it was just a, actually a thrill talking to you. We've, we've admired you for so long, and we really appreciate you taking the time. I know the time difference kind of makes it difficult, and, and we interrupted what sounds like a very delicious meal. So um, <laughs> we just want to thank you for coming on with us, and uh, next time we're in uh, London, we're going to look you up. We're going to take you to the Maple Leaf, and I think we've got a tab there still waiting for us, actually. <laughs> and and we'll send you a taste of Canada because we'll send you some uh, Mark's clothing. You remember Mark's Work Warehouse? They sponsor this uh, podcast, but it's just called Marks now. They're very hip oh. now, Romy. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, you got to do one. You got to do one thing for me before we wrap this up. Sure. Like, I have been told. Now I'm not, I'm not sure whether it's Jay or Dan, but one of you guys does a pretty good Romy score call. Oh yeah, yeah. I do an okay one. The guy you remember, Tony Darchi, Paul Romanuk. Do you remember Darch? <laughs> Of course. Yeah, he's one of our producers here uh, for for our listeners, and Darchi's a, an interesting guy. He's now the producer of the CFL on TSN, but he he does the better uh, Romy. But but the the call I like to do is is always uh, is this. It's very it's very concise. It's very concise and precise, and it's this. Skirt. 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 That's pretty good. Yeah, that's it. That's not bad. That's yeah. <laughs> In fact, that's better than I do it some <laughs> You're too kind, Romy. Uh, enjoy the meal, and uh, and thanks again for coming on with us. We appreciate it. Always a pleasure, guys. Anytime. Take care. Really seems like he's... Uh, who wouldn't want to live in Europe for a few years and just kick back and cook up mushroom dinners every night? You miss some Timmy's, though. You, you miss uh, maple... Well, you probably get maple syrup over there. There's no maple syrup. Well, there might not be. They stole all of it in Quebec, remember? No, it's... they've got a stockpile. Oh, do they? Yeah. Okay, good. Secret stash. I was a little worried there for a second. Um, before we get to the mark of the day and some other things, uh, we have a checklist I wanted to go through. Let's I wanted it. to mention, I saw 21 Jump Street. Oh, the yeah. The movie. Yeah. Um, I'm now comparing every comedy to Ted because Ted was so bad. I, I can't understand why 21 you 21 so Jump bad. Street blew Ted out of the water. I giggled twice, maybe at Ted, Twenty One Jump Street. I, I wasn't expecting anything. I, I was, uh, I was holding me guts. I fell asleep halfway through it. They could have shortened it, but it wasn't that great. It was I, okay. I didn't mind it. I just can't understand why you hated Ted so much. The scene of him, word. the scene of him trying to pick up the girl in the grocery store was one of my favorite scenes of any movie this year. Like just the continued cuts back to Ted. It, again, it wasn't. Was it the greatest movie ever? No, but it was a good for a little chuckle. Like, what were you expecting from Ted? Citizen Kane? I was expecting. It was a little talking bear, foul mouthed. Oh, Laurie, hey, you're home early. Who are these girls? They're hookers, so it's fine. You know, somewhere out there are four terrible fathers I wish I could thank for this great night. I was expecting a lot more than I got. The other thing, and we've discussed this on radio, and maybe we haven't talked about this on the podcast, and this is a good thing for us to get into, and I, I hope Christoph and Mike will weigh in on this too. Dan doesn't consider Mila Kunis to be attractive. You don't, you don't get it, right? Would I don't, that be correct? I don't find her as hot as everyone thinks she is. I just find her as, eh, eh. Whenever I hear her talk, I hear of Meg Griffin. I hear Meg Griffin. Because so she more does the, the voice. voice of Meg Griffin on Family Guy. Is it more the voice? I just want to kill myself. I'm going upstairs right now and eat a whole bowl of peanuts. I'm allergic to peanuts. You don't know anything about me. Who was that guy? Is it? Uh, she, she doesn't do it. That, zit. 
Just doesn't do it for you. G- guess Smoky who... eyes and incredible bum. Not not interested. Guess who loves her? Who? Producer Tim? Oh, oh yeah. Well, hey, Mila, are you dressing as a sexy football player? <laughs> what? Sexy football player? What is that? God. Uh, speaking of Tim, is it is it time for story time with producer Tim? Yeah, that's a good segue. Um, first of all, thank you for all your feedback. Everyone absolutely loved the first edition of story time with producer Tim. Remember, Dan and I have not heard the story. Uh, this is as new to us as it is to you. So uh, let's take a listen to the second edition of story time with producer Tim. Can you tell me a bedtime story? <laughs> I love this. One of my favorite G and Dan moments uh, is the time that Dan ate a bad burger before coming into work, and he was sick the whole night. Uh, then when he got on the air, halfway through the show, he announced that you know he was starting to feel a little bit better. Jay then promptly made him laugh so hard that he had to run off the set during the show because he thought he was going to throw up. <laughs> Unfortunately, he never actually did throw up. Uh, the end. The end. <laughs> Hey, we said. <laughs> Unfortunately, he said. See, he's he wants bad things to happen to me. No, oh, he does. He definitely likes me more than you. Yeah, I had a uh, bad chicken sandwich. You're not going to say where it was from, are you? No, no. It was. I couldn't eat that chicken sandwich for uh, for a couple of years. I'm back on them now. Back on the Sammies. Back on the Sammy train. But yeah, train. it was. It was disgusting. You did throw up one night, or I think. You threw out the threw up the uh, out the other end. No, I had I I reverse butt chugged. I had violent diarrhea. You one had night. fish soup. I uh, my ex wife, uh, my wife at the time uh, was uh, she made me uh, some uh, bouillabaisse. I believe they call it bouillabaisse. And uh, I was like, oh, this is delicious, and I'm scarfing it down. No, I realized she was trying to poison me <laughs> because she knew I was going to leave. But at the time, it was delicious. And then I got to work, and you and I were working together. And I ne- I'll never forget that. Like, I literally was going to <laughs> my pants on the Sports Center set. Do not go in there. Woo! And I had to leave, and you had to do all my highlight packs. You were, you were a trooper. That was very early on in our, uh, in our broadcast partnership. You wasn't were it? white as a ghost. Yeah, I was, it was not good. You're usually pasty white, but you were pastier than usual. Yeah, that's true. Um,. I, I walked through the Toronto airport uh, on Wednesday, and some dude sent me a tweet. And he said, "Was that you walking through the airport? You need a shave, and you're pale." <laughs> Someone sent me a picture. Remember when we went to Sudbury? Uh, this is probably a month ago, and they gave us uh, oars as uh, presents for That's helping right. out with an event. Yep. Someone sent me a picture with. I was in the airport with my luggage and an oar, and they said, "Do you always travel with boating gear?" That they sent it like two days ago. I'm like, first off, what are you doing with that picture? And secondly, yes, I do. Well, you so someone had secretly taken a picture of you. You gotta watch yourself. You know all the places you're going into. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> exactly. And someone was upset that I didn't use that. I didn't say, oh my god, when Weston Dressler was uh, was one of the Gibson's finest players of the week. Oh, you should have. Yeah, we I forgot have all about that. Hey, I you- made Weston Dressler's bed. <laughs> Hey, by the way, uh, we we told a story about um, you were talking about you know people's house that smell like cat piss, mm-hmm. and I was uh, mm-hmm. that's the first mm-hmm mm-hmm. we've done this week. That was the first. Mm-hmm. It was, and uh, so so you know I was on with James Sabolski on Sabolski and Company on uh, TSN Radio ten fifty four to seven Eastern uh, Monday to Friday in Toronto in Toronto, and James, a uh, great guy, he said he loved the bit. But then he told, he ended up telling a story that did involve him pissing, uh, but it had nothing to do with cats. Christoph, do we have that one? On a side note with respect to the cat piss, when I was about 16 and starting to stay out, stay out a little later, go out having a few drinks with buddies, you know, you want to be as quiet as you can when you're getting in late, right? So as opposed to just going to the washroom when I got in the house, I would just go to the backyard behind the shed and take a squirt. And <laughs> this one is going day, on my recap. And, and one day, and, and one day, sense. and one day, my father kind of pulls me aside and says, "Hey, stop peeing in the backyard." <laughs> and, I, and I, you know, we had a dog at the time. I'm like, oh, "What do you mean, it's a dog, man?" He's like, "A human's urine smells a lot different than dogs piss." Think about that. I I pee off the side of my deck. 
Didn't you teach your daughter to do that? <laughs> she thinks it's great. She's like, hey, can I do that? So she goes on the grass and just goes to town. Just I'm like, I, I don't care. Lifts her leg up and goes to town. <laughs> Hey! Like I said, my uh, my Halloween costume wasn't a very far stretch. <laughs> Why not, eh? <laughs> you are a hillbilly. Why are you getting that close to urine that you can smell it outdoors? It's a great and question. And how much urine is there? So his dad got on his hands and knees. First of all, <laughs> this you assume that James got home at, say, 2 in the morning, urinated. So then... What, six, seven hours later, his dad wakes up, gets on his hands and knees, gets down by the grass, smells the urine spot, and says, No, oh, that's my son's hot piss. A Me human's won't... urine smells a lot different than dog's piss. You won't get away with this, son. <laughs> so, uh, so far this podcast, we talk about pooping in urinals, diarrhea, and now James Sapolsky's urine. This is... Uh, I can't wait for the next review of the podcast. Well, I, again, I ran. I was at the Argos game last Friday, Dan. Oh, look at me! I go to Argos games. Yeah, Monday nighters. That's yeah, exactly. And, and I, I went to kick for a million. By the way, the guy he was starting off great. R Rick Pope was that his name? The, the Pope, the yeah. Pope of Winnipeg. He did incredible. Like that's a very generous, very generous prize pack because he won the at the twenty yard line. He hit the twenty yarder. Okay. He gets a $25,000 gift certificate to the source. That's pretty cool. He hits from 30. He gets a new Nissan truck. Wicked. He hits from he doesn't hit from 40, doesn't hit from 50, but he kicks it 42 yards. 1000 bucks for every yards he kicked it. Mm -hmm. 42,000 bucks. That's a pretty good haul for Wendy's kick for a million. You know how small this world is? Uh, a gentleman who does the sports at Checks TV in Peterborough, Tyler Calver, he tweeted, hey, I used to work with the guy kicking for when he's kicked for a million. Yeah, he's in the media. He works for the Winnipeg Sun, I believe. Yeah, and you know how, sorry, you bring up Cuba again. I was driving on the 401 the other day. Um, I looked next to me. The gentleman in the car beside me was a guy who was on the park and fly bus on the way back from being dropped off from Cuba and going to the park and fly to pick up our cars. What are the odds of that guy being right next to me on the 401? <sighs> I, I'm totally confused by that story. I don't know. It was the, I was sitting across from him know. two weeks ago on the park and fly, and now I was uh, sitting next to him on the 401. Don't you have a driver who drops you right off? <laughs> yeah, the park and fly. Oh, he drops you off the park and fly? Does not drop you off at the departures area? Well, I didn't walk from there. It was, ah, oh, this is too convoluted. <laughs> I thought it was easy to follow. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm tired. Uh, we'll have to get to your... Ganessa Gone oh, Wild. No, can, can we just get to that song? Or are we too late? Oh, okay, we can get to this. This I saw this on. Now the you, soup. you sent me this. You sent me a link. Um, I I must have too many filters on my computer. I couldn't open it. Okay, well, so I haven't seen this. Yeah, no, stop searching for so much porn. <laughs> uh, here is this is Ganessa. Uh, uh, this is a, the latest pop star from the USA. This is a song called Wilder. Get down. They're like they're cranking the keyboards up as high as they can go. They're, they're drowning her out. Yeah, that don't you think that's a good thing? Wow. So is that on par with the Friday Friday? That's what we assume that that her dad has lots of money and and he said, "What do you want for your 16th birthday?" A recording session and a number one hit song? <laughs> I think my butt jogging is still going to be I got to be one of the and three and I'm butt jogging. It reminds me more of uh, Lana Del Rey's video games. That's what it reminds me of. Lana Del Rey, now a spokesmodel for H&M clothing. Well, remember when we first heard oh. that her do that video game song she on did SNL. On, on SNL? 
and the lyrics were atrocious, and and oh, she was awful. She had, she was pretty though. I have to say, the SNL cast this year, I'm loving it. They they were uh, a couple of years they were just atrocious. Now it's it's back on par to, to where it used to be. I think the 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 cast is outstanding. The writing is it's uneven. Yeah, that's a nice way of putting it. That's that, probably how people are going to describe like this podcast. Describe this podcast. Uh, the writing is uneven. Uh, okay, so it's uh, the mark of the week. It's the Mark's Perfectly Pressed podcast. Uh, brought to you by Mark's Perfectly Pressed Shirts. Uh, each week, uh, we give Jay a uh, famous mark uh, yeah. to guess, and uh, we let the Plinko chip fall. And this week, uh, let's see where it lands. I was born in Welland, Ontario. Spent parts of six seasons in the NHL. I finished with two career shutouts. I once fought Sean Burke at Maple Leaf Gardens during the line brawl. Aside from the Leafs, I also played for the Wings, Flyers, and Senators, and I was named the AHL's best goalie in 87 and 91. Who the hell am I? Jesus. Mm -hmm. I'm drawing a blank. I'm embarrassed. I, uh, I gave the same clues to one of our producers, Al Cole, and as soon as I said the Sean Burke fight, yeah. he said, I was at that game. Oh, I'm so embarrassed. I can't remember off the top of my head. Mark LaForest. Oh, LaForest. Oh, God. That was a tough one. That was a tough one. No, it wasn't. I'm so, I'm so embarrassed. I'm crushed right now. He, he only played, a, I thought he played more, but he only played just over 100 games in the NHL. You you even digitally uh, uh, messed up his voice, and I that was me. It. Oh, that was you. We didn't. Oh, have I him thought come that in. was him. I thought you had him come in and do that. No, it was me. Okay. I don't think if it was his voice, I don't think you'd get it anyway. Yeah, no, that was a tough one. Well, it was an easy one, and I failed miserably. But that's okay. Um. So that's the podcast. Uh, Romanek, that was so great to talk to him, and you can tell he's just a nice guy. Like I, I brought up the point that when I was what twelve, thirteen years ago. Called him up, called me back. I, I didn't expect to hear anything back, and um, I, I respect him for doing that. I said the same thing. Uh, Landsberg, you may have heard him briefly there in that clip where Sabolski was talking about pissing in his backyard when he was 16. Landsberg was on the radio show with Sabolski and I today, and uh, he did the exact same thing. I was at Ryerson. I had to do an interview with a broadcaster, and back then you, you couldn't email anyone because I'm, there was no email. I was so old. There's no email there. <laughs> so uh, you had to cold call the guy, so I called him, left a message for him. He called me right back, and I got to come into the TSN studio, and I got to uh, to hang out, and, uh, and, and next thing I know, I was working as a writer at TSN. I mean, he was just outstanding. And another story. Get a room. Another story. Dave Randorf, same thing. Did the same thing when I was like in uh, high school. I called up Rambo. Don't know how I got a hold of him. Got his home number. Went to his house. Crawled into bed with him. Made love to him for several hours. Then left. Don't think that has anything to do with me working at the network, but that was a wonderful time as a teen. Rambo, one of the uh, few men that I tower over at TSN. I, I don't know if I'd say tower over. <laughs> the one man that I my eye level is higher than his eye level. Yeah, I would agree with that. I'm wearing a, a T-shirt with your face on it, as we've all pointed out, and uh, someone had a good line today because the T-shirt's right around my nipple area, uh, or, or sorry, the 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 picture of you is right around my nipple area, and someone said, uh, "Is that uh, exactly how tall he is? He comes up to your nipples?" It's about right. I don't know. He's a little taller than that. Uh, Christoph and Mike, as always, thank you for uh, your help on the podcast, and, and we should say this uh, this podcast number six is in memory of Kermit. The frog that lived for a week and a half in the O'Toole house and is now dead. Thanks for listening. Bye, Kermit. Bye. They're going home. Dance. 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 Keep dancing. Brought to you by Mark's Never Iron Perfectly Pressure.